So this is the outdoor vlogging test between the Sony ZV E10 and the iPhone 14 Pro. On the Sony ZV E10, we're shooting with the kit lens, which is the 16 to 15 mil kit lens, and um, we're shooting at 16 mil. This is a crop sensor camera, so that 16 mil is um, when you convert it to full frame, it's the 24 mil full frame equivalent. On the iPhone 14 Pro, we're shooting with the wide lens, which is a 24 mil full frame equivalent. The wide lens is a 48 megapixel lens. This is currently 11 a.m. and like the weather is constantly changing, so. If you notice that the lighting is changing, just know that we're outdoors and we can't really control the light. This drive video is turned off on the iPhone 14 Pro and on the Sony we're shooting on PPO. So this is not in any way a high dynamic range test. We just want to see how it will look like using the standard um, definition, using a, a, a picture profile that is ready to go that doesn't really require too much color grading. So how does it look at the moment? Let me know. Now it's burning hot. But anyways, the cool thing about the Sony is that it has the flip LCD screen so I can like see myself I can make sure that I'm well in frame and the exposure and everything is right if I start shooting I won't while I'm shooting I can see see myself on the iPhone I can't the only way I can do that on the iPhone is um, by using the front facing camera and the quality of the front facing camera is not as good as the quality of um, the rear facing camera that's the back facing camera we well, are currently shooting with the rear facing camera right now but quickly let me just switch to the front facing camera of the iPhone 14 Pro so you can see what it's like so this is the front facing camera of the iPhone 14 Pro. This is um, what it will look like if I'm using the lower quality lens, which is still right, but the good thing is that I can see myself and make sure that I'm well in frame before I start shooting, but I don't think the quality will be as good. Um, we'll be testing out cinematic mode on iPhone 14 Pro shortly. And this is still how the Sony looks like. Yeah. Okay, so I'm currently shooting with cinematic mode on iPhone 14 Pro. So the background should be more blurry right now. Um, it's currently at default at f7.1. I might adjust it later in post. I'll let you know. Um, the Sony was shooting at f3.5. We don't have that cinematic mode, but if you have a fast lens, like a lens that can go all the way to like 1.8, 1, 2.8, 1, or 2.5, or whatever, um, we'll be able to get a really nice blurry background. But I still feel like I can still see some bokeh as, as I'm looking at the flip LCD screen of the Sony. I can still see some bokeh, which is really cool. The only problem I have with the iPhone is that usually I usually see like the edge detection is not really the best. It might be blowing out parts of my hair. If you check out parts of my hair, I, I'm guessing it's kind of blurred out. How does it look? Is the cinematic mode good? Is it good enough? Let me move a bit forward. And let me move a book. Let me move a bit backwards. Before I forget, we're also shooting a 4K 24 frames per second on both cameras. Um, the sound that you're hearing is coming from the Sony. We have a Rode video micro attached to the Sony camera, and um, so we're we'll probably going to get better audio. There's a car coming, so um, the audio is going to be not get really good real quick. Just hold on. But mind you, we're still in cinematic mode on iPhone 14 Pro. And yes, so I, like I was saying, while recording using the Rode Video Micro, I attached it easily to the Sony ZV-8 and there's a, like a, a shoe mount for it um, where you can easily attach microphones. On the iPhone, on the other hand, you can't just easily attach a microphone to it. You need to like get like a tripod um, or a rig or something so you to like put the iPhone on top and be able to like um, attach other accessories like a microphone. So um, we're doing a handheld test here, so just how the, what the quality of the video will be like just by holding the camera with your hand and this is what it looks like this is what the Sony looks like um, this country is still cinematic mode on the iPhone so this is what the Sony looks like see the microphone, this is the Rode Video microphone I just attached it to the hot shoe easily I can't do that with the iPhone um, another cool thing that the iPhone also has is that the iPhone has an ultra wide lens um, so if I want to like show more things in the film I can do that which is what I want to do right now um, the Sony, this lens I'm using is the minimum focal length is 16 so i'm stuck like this it's a good focal lens but if i want something wider i need to get like, change the lens but in this one set up i can go to ultra wide lens on the iphone let's do that right now so this is the ultra wide lens on the iphone 14 pro um you see how wide it is and how it shows a lot of things in the frame so if you want that kind of look we can get that for me personally the ultra wide lens is too wide like it's just too wide for vlog in my opinion, I would prefer the, the wide lens. Wide lens is also a better quality lens than the ultra wide lens on iPhone 14 Pro. But if I really want this ultra wide look, I can get it. Um, the sun is really coming out. My sun is getting too exposed, so I have to adjust the, um, what do you call it, the shutter speed. I'm using the shutter to speed to expose. Because I want the aperture to make constant at f3.5. So I've adjusted it. On the iPhone, it will adjust automatically. Um, because I using auto exposure, which is the good thing about iPhone. And it's also a bad thing because the iPhone automatically adjusts for exposure for you. But if you want to lock that exposure, you're also going to lock the focus, which you don't want because 
you want it to focus. You want when you're moving, you want the camera to be able to um, focus on you wherever you move. Um, you don't want to use manual focus, and whenever you lock the exposure, it also locks the focus, which is what I don't like about the iPhone. The auto wide lens, you can only use it in normal video mode. Um, before we start doing cinematic mode, we are doing regular video mode. So auto wide lens can only be used in regular video mode. You can't use it in cinematic mode. Cinematic mode, you can only use the main lens, which is the wide lens, and that's the 1x lens, and the 3x lens, which is the telephoto lens. So now I will switch to HDR video turned on on the iPhone 14 Pro and S Log 3 on the Sony's DV810. So this is high dynamic range test. Both of them are going to have like a flat look straight out of camera, but we can color grade them the way we want um, as we see fit. And also the details in the white and the details in the black to so be more apparent. We're able to get the most dynamic range from both cameras on this mode. So how does it look like? Um, S Log 3, so on ISO 500 on the Sony's DV810, because that is the best ISO. I should have a shutter speed of one um, four thousandths of a second which is really really high but the sun is really, really high we're not using an empty filter it's still on ft.5 this is the regular video mode on iphone 14 pro still 4k 24 frames per second on both cameras this is what cinematic mode looks like um when shooting hr video turned on on the iphone 14 pro and this is still the same um setup on the sony so like i said a slug tv on the sony hr video turned on, on the iphone we're getting a more dynamic range from this test let's check out the highlights how the highlights on um, the sony from the screen the highlights looks blown out um, but when we get to post when we're editing we'll probably check that out and see how it looks like but yeah i saw 500 exposure composition of about 1.0 1.3 roughly the iphone will just do the exposure itself i think this is cinematic mode let me go to regular video mode so this regular video mode on iphone 14 pro um, in the more ideal situation, we would have like used the tripod for this test, like have a tripod for the Sony, like a vlogging tripod, and it tri also have that for the iPhone. But just wanted to see what it would be like to just take out your camera without having to do too much accessorizing, just take it out and use your hand to vlog and see what it's going to be like. Um, I think it's easier carrying the iPhone for a longer period of time um, than the sun. They won't do the boot light cameras. For some reason, more energy is required to carry the sun. Or maybe just because my left hand because it's the weaker hand. I don't know. But anyway, this is also audio coming out from the iPhone 14 Pro now. How does it sound like? Does it sound good? And this is audio coming out from the Sony. This is not a good test because then again, um, the Rode Video Micro is attached and external microphone is attached to the Sony, so you're going to get better results. But anyways, this is Rode Video Micro sound and this is the iPhone 14 Pro sound. Um, is iPhone 14 Pro sound good enough or do you need to like rig it up so you can attach the microphone to it? Let me show you how the Sony will sound like without the microphone. So this is what the Sony sounds like without the microphone. Um, and this is what the iPhone 14 Pro sounds at without the microphone attached to it, just the way it has been since. Which is better straight out of camera, which has better sound straight out of camera. Um, but ideally if you want to use this to vlog, it's always best to get um, a microphone, a separate microphone, an external microphone for each of them so you can be able to like get the best quality audio and this is what the sony zv10 sounds like with a microphone there's some hammering going down one more wind is about to start falling so i think i need to start going one more thing so since the beginning of this test we've been shooting using standard image stabilization on the sony zv10 which is the stabilization that makes use of um your the optical um, image stabilization of your lens but now we're currently on active image stabilization which is a type of digital stabilization um it's not IBs, but it's still going to do. The only problem I have with it now is that because I'm using a 16 mm lens, it's too cropped in. So, in, in as much as here, I'll get better stabilization from this. Let's walk. I'll get better stabilization from this when I'm walking. Um, the only problem now is that it's over cropped in. So, I don't think this mode is useful, except I get like a wider lens for the Sony, like maybe a 10 to 18 mm lens. Oh, yeah. So, for quick comparison, let me show you what it looks like with standard. So, this is what it looks like with standard image stabilization or walking. Um, it will be more shakes here, but at least we can see more things in the frame. And this is handheld. If I have this on the tripod, it will be probably better. Let's see if it does a better job with stabilization on the iPhone or the Sony. On the iPhone, this one has stabilization already, which is yeah, um, pretty much already a good form of stabilization. It doesn't really crop in, it just crops in a little bit. So that's what we'll be shooting on this in the beginning of this test. So yeah, that's it. This is what the flip LCD screen on the Sony looks like. As you can see, I can see myself through this. Um, display here to this the flip LCD screen there. I can only so flip it back like this and flip it to that side if I'm at the back of the camera so I can be seeing what I'm recording. But when I'm on the front, I can still flip it. So this is what it looks like when I flip it when I'm at the back of the camera. This is what it's going to look like, and this is what it looks like when I'm at the front of the camera. We're going to be able to record with the iPhone for a longer period of time. 
um, the iPhone has better battery life than the Sony ZV-810. Currently on 63% on the Sony ZV-810, while on the iPhone we're on 80%. So that's a pretty big gap. So for recording long for a longer period of time, the iPhone is a better bet. But the good thing about the Sony is that you can get spare battery. So when you want battery dies, you can switch to the other battery and switch to the other battery when it dies. Well, while iPhone once it dies, the battery is not um, switchable. You need to basically go and charge it. And when you don't charge you come back, which could help make you miss some shots and all. So, but the, the battery life on the iPhone is pretty decent. So for you to really like exhaust the one battery which is inside that you can't remove, it's going to take a long time. So yeah, when it's now falling, what to go? And I I forgot to mention about cinematic mode on iPhone 14 Pro is that in as much as it gives you this blurry background, it also gives you the option to later on in post to switch the focus point. So now that it's focused on my face, I can tap on let's say my right here or my left here and maybe tap other person that is at the back there and start focusing on that person instead of my face stuff like that you can't do that on the sun if you want to do that on the sun you have to on camera now have to tap on the person's face to do that and um the iphone you can do that later on you can do it in post you can do it when you're editing um which is really really cool but you can't do that on the sun you have to do this on camera on the sun another bad thing about the sun is that the sun is dv and it's not where that's you so now that rain is falling i can comfortably use my iphone because my iphone has an ip68 water resistant routine so which means I can use it in rainfalls not too heavy rainfall but rainfalls like this I can submerge the beautiful water if you do that with the sunny <laughs> so goodbye to your camera so that's why look at my sunny right now I don't have it put it I'm basically using my shirt to cover it but I can comfortably still use the iPhone to record sunny is the written probably will not survive on that rain it doesn't have it it's not weather still like bigger sunny cameras like the sunny so after going through the video, here are my final thoughts. 1. The Sony footage was really shaky. So it's best to get a vlogging tripod to use when vlogging to reduce shakiness. Or you can get a wide lens like um, the Tamron 11-20mm f2.8 lens. Shoot at 11mm with it and then turn on active image stabilization on the camera. That way, even though active image stabilization will crop in, the video will still be wide enough to show your full face and not crop some parts out. Hands down, the iPhone wins in terms of video stabilization. 2. Regarding video quality, I prefer that from the Sony. The Sony looks more like real life. The iPhone over sharpens everything and I'm not a fan of that type of look. That digital sharpening look. But the iPhone is still very much usable. The quality is still top notch. At the end of the day, it just boils down to what you personally prefer. Theory, the iPhone is always in your pocket. You just bring it out from your pocket and begin to shoot with it. It is easily accessible, it is easy to use. You can use the iPhone to shoot in pretty much all locations, whereas many locations will not allow you to shoot with a digital camera like the Sony ZV E10. 4. The file sizes of the footage from the iPhone are much smaller than that of the footage from the Sony ZV E10, especially when you're shooting in the high efficiency codec, that is um, H265. So that's going to minimize your storage usage and help you save space in the long run. 5. Regarding sound, Best bet is to get an external microphone if you want to use them for vlogging. The internal microphones on both cameras are just there, like nothing special. I have a video that's an indoor video quality comparison between the Sony ZV E10 and the iPhone 14 Pro coming soon. We'll be using video lights, we'll be comparing slow motion on both cameras, we'll be comparing the T-Rex telephoto lens on the iPhone with an equivalent focal length on the Sony and so much more. By the time you're watching this video, that video that I told you that is coming soon will probably be out. So click here or click here to watch that coming soon video that should be out by now. Thanks for watching guys, subscribe if you're new here, leave a comment if you found this video useful and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers!